Welcome to the Royal Aberdeen Children's Hospital. Where every year... Option number one is chop it off. <laughs> more than 20,000 boys and girls from across the north of Scotland receive life-changing treatment. Can you hear Mummy's voice, Clara? Oh, wow! From a dedicated medical team. It's different from Hobie City and Casualty and what you actually see in the soaps. Coming up, baby Jackson has life-saving surgery at just three days old. What we're planning to do today is take all of this dressing off, take this bag off and close his tummy wall. We find out what's stuck up Ossian's nose. Did it just get up there itself? No, I picked it up. Oh, OK. And Lachlan celebrates a special milestone. This is the Children's Hospital. At only two days old, baby Jackson is beginning his life in the neonatal intensive care unit. Jackson has a serious condition called gastroschisis. His abdominal wall is open and his bowel is on the outside of his body. It's scary seeing your own child in here. Like... Gastroschisis occurs when the muscles that make up a baby's abdominal wall don't form correctly. Found out 12 weeks, so we kind of we knew what was expecting and I was prepared. I was prepared. It's still hard. And tomorrow will bring another challenge for first time parents Shannon and Chris as baby Jackson undergoes life saving surgery. Okay, ready? So. <laughs> but for now, it's a special moment for Dad. Oh. <laughs> Who's this? His very first cuddle. Oh, it's tiny. Oh, <laughs> baby. Oh. Life changing. <laughs> Jackson is one of 900 babies that will be cared for in the neonatal unit each year. Around 1 in 10 babies born in Aberdeen will receive treatment here. His respiratory rate has been up a wee bit as well. Um, a dedicated team keeps the most fragile babies alive. How's Mummy today? She's shattered, but she wants to come down a bit. She wants to see her baby. It's a shame. But... Babies born as early as three months premature. Big stretches, hey? We have seen babies as small as a bag of sugar, so 23 weeks gestation, so that's about 17 weeks early, and about 500 grams. Oh my gosh, I think it is so difficult for parents. I can't imagine, I'm, you know, I'm not on that side of it, but you know, I look after them and deal with them every day, and they have a huge journey, especially for the very sick babies and the very premature ones. Without medical support, these babies won't survive. And every day in the neonatal unit brings a new challenge. Half a loaf for food life count, half a loaf for electrolytes. Mm -hmm. 
you know what there is? Sixty. Yeah, this is it just going crazy. We've had a quiet spell, so, um, so yeah, this is when it's all systems go. <laughs> Start of the baby boom. So now we've got five babies in it now, so yes, it's all very busy. The neonatal unit staff have one common goal for these miracle babies. Seeing my little friends that I have looked after for whether it's days, weeks or months, go home with their family and, and then they come back and see us and I think that's just the most fantastic thing that they've survived a, a journey and they've gone home with their mum and dad. In the emergency department waiting room, three-year-old Ossian is hiding an unusual problem. Today, Ossian uh, was at nursery. I got a phone call saying that he'd put something up his nose. I think it's a, a chickpea, a dried chickpea. They do lots of shaker things with dried um, chickpeas and things like that. So I think that's what's up his nose. What's up your nose? It's down. It's just going up your nose. It's like it's smelly. Oh, Hiya. Do you come? You coming this way with me? Don't worry, Mummy's coming to you. Right. Mum Penny hopes the emergency department team can dislodge the chickpea. There we go. Do you want to have a little seat on this chair here for me? There we go. Have a little seat. My um, name's Nicole. I'm one of the nurses. So, what's happened to you? It's going up my nose. You've got a stone up your nose? Right, okay, definitely a stone, do we think? It's, I think it's a, like a dried chickpea. Oh, okay, that's fine. And which nostril is it in, do we know? The right. The right nostril. Right then. Do you think you can lie down on the bed for me and I can have a little look up your nose to see if I can see this pea? Okay. Yeah, yeah you lie up there. Do you think you can manage to get up or do you need a hand? I need a hand from Mum. You need a hand from Mum. Right now, this is just a torch, okay? So it's nothing to be worried about, and I'm just going to shine up your nose to see if I can see what's up there. Is that all right? Yeah. The same as the one on the ears, isn't it? Right, yeah. so we think it's here, do we? Yeah. Oh, I can see it without really looking. So what we normally do is we try something called the mother's kiss. Yeah. So basically what that involves is you holding down the nostril that the yeah. foreign body's not in, so this one, mm. and putting a tight seal around his mouth yeah. and a really short, sharp blow in his mouth. Don't be shy. It really has to be a short, yeah. sharp blow. And then hopefully the pressure of that will help to move it down so that we can fish it out. Yeah. So I'll take her if you like. Right, I'll we'll see. So what I'm going to do is going to pop my finger on here, OK? And then I'm going to blow in through your mouth and see if we can get it out of your nose. Is that all right? Yeah. It might feel a little bit tickly, a bit but it won't be sore. It'll just be a bit strange. Yeah. Good boy. OK? OK, it's all right. I'll Don't worry. Go. Just a quick second. <laughs> Aussie is definitely not a fan. What's your sister called? What's her name? Has she got a name? One quick go. Let's see if we can try. Then you'll be able to go home. So can you lie down oh, so yeah. I can Mom's do it? going to give you a big Just kiss. in case it comes out. What a clever well boy. Done. Okay. Oh, really clever. <laughs> oh, well done. That was really tricky. It's a bit funny. It's a bit tickly. The chickpea is still stuck. So Mum tries again. Just one more go. Hold mummy's hand, that's it. It's all right, it's all right. Open your mouth. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. You did really well. You did really well. Really well. Good job. Good job. Did it come out? No, but that's okay. That's all right. The mother's kiss manoeuvre has failed to shift the chickpea. So Nurse Nicole calls for backup. So I think it can be quite scary for them to 
have someone come at them and blow into their mouth. I think it's a strange sensation. It doesn't cause them any pain and it's not dangerous, but it is obviously a bit strange for them. Is it broken? What's broken? Oh, no. No, your nose isn't broken. Don't worry. Hello. Do we have Ozzy? My name's David. I'm one of the doctors on. Say hello. Hiya. This is going up. I believe you've got something up your nose. This is stone. A stone. How did it get there? At nursery. At nursery. Did it just get up there itself? No, I picked it up. Okay. You want to pop up onto this bed and we'll have a wee look? So I'm just putting some gloves on and I'm going to try and just hook it out. Right. That's a bit bright. Do you want to close your eyes? Keep your head back. That's it. <laughs> it's all done. Look, do you want to see it? Yeah, that's a big one, wasn't it? What was, what was that, that doing? doing there? What was that doing up your nose? Yeah. That's it. It's all done. It was so, I know, I'm sorry. But I had to get it out. Yeah. Okay. It's quite big. And you've only got a small nose. Yeah, it was a rammed that rat right up there, did you? <laughs> yeah, not that nose. Not that nose, no, the other one. But it's all out now, that's good, isn't it? You want to blow your nose? Let's get your finger out there. It was quite a big chickpea, yeah. It's bigger than I expected to come out. Hopefully no more chickpeas at nursery. Um, good that they're having healthy things. <laughs> but I think he, I don't think he'll be doing it again. I think he's learnt his lesson. Is it finished now? It is, yeah. Boy, you say thank you and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Say bye, Ossie. Bye. Thanks. It's the morning of Jackson's operation. Excited, but... Nervous. I think when we can hold him and cuddle him, it'll be, it'll be better. Some skin to skin. Aye. Today, yeah. consultant paediatric surgeon Mr Patel will put Jackson's exposed bowel back inside his body. To keep Jackson's bowel protected, it was placed inside a long plastic pouch called a silo. One end of the silo was attached to the hole in Jackson's abdomen. The other end was hung above, and with a bit of help from doctors and gravity, the bowel slips into its natural place. What we've done over the last few days is slowly push the bowel that was in the bag back into his tummy. And what we're planning to do today is take all of this dressing off, take this bag off and close his tummy wall. It's life-saving surgery. So how are you feeling, Chris? A bit nervous. <laughs> I'll be glad when it's over. It's too upsetting for Mum, but Dad, Chris, will comfort Jackson during surgery with neonatal nurse Kelly. This is a place that parents don't expect to be. When they have that happy, you know, they're pregnant, you don't expect to end up in the neonatal unit, so Part of our important part of our job is to support those parents through, you know, a really difficult time. We're going to inject the local anaesthetic in first, and what uh, Dad's giving at the moment is um, some sugar solution to Jackson. And we know that uh, sugar solution in babies helps keep them nice and calm. If you just hold his legs straight, just while I'm doing it, that's it. The local anaesthetic has numbed the hole in Jackson's abdomen. Oh, very well. Off and off. Pinky. Enjoy Dad's finger. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me see if I can just put the stitching whilst it's like that. So, 
Just move the bag over that side. So I've just made those little holes where, where I'm going to actually put the stitch into. Mr Patel is using a technique called the purse string suture. Stitches are thread around the edge of the abdomen hole. Once the bowel is inside, the stitches will be tightened, closing the hole like a drawstring on a bag. Because your, your, your muscles close from the, uh, the edges and eventually close in a circumferential manner, it's trying to recreate that with the stitch. The silo bag protecting Jackson's bowel is removed. Some of Jackson's bowel has slipped out. Mr. Patel moves it into place. With the bowel safely inside, the hole in Jackson's abdomen is closed. It's not so bad, is it? It's the worst part, over. Must be. There we go. When I took the bag off, there was a bit of the intestine that, uh, that came out, and that's uh, not uncommon. It's just not panicking when that happens because you know it's going to go back in again. Dad was uh, excellent. He, uh, he seemed to be calm all the way through. So you're welcome back in. Any son. <laughs> You want to come around here? Who's this coming to see you? Are you getting first shot? Is it? <laughs> My turn. <laughs> Finally, the moment Mum has been waiting for. Her first ever cuddle with three day old Jackson. Love you. Hi Carly, uh, Stott here, how are you? I'm good, thanks. It's the start of a busy day for oncology nurse Dodd. Okay. I've basically been a nurse since I left school. I started my training in 1983. So what's that, 36 years ago? For 25 of those years, Dot has worked at the Children's Hospital. And four years ago, she qualified as an oncology nurse to care for young cancer patients. It can be really tough. You have good days, you have bad days, but um, on the whole, you know, it's a lot of satisfaction looking after these kids, seeing them recovering and seeing them going home. I tend to leave work at work and home at home. So it's, I think it's really important to make the difference the connections, because um, if you took work home, you can do it. Dot is due to be giving five-year-old Edie chemotherapy. How are you today? Are you better? Thumbs up? Two thumbs up. Cool. Edie was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukaemia almost two years ago, and today should be one of her last chemo sessions. Any temperature spikes? But Edie has been suffering with a cold and fever and has been put in isolation. She's had blood tests and depending on the results, today's chemotherapy could be cancelled. So we're just looking to see if there's anything come back um, to identify any viruses that's going on with her. 
We'll have to see. She has had another temperature spike, but we'll see what Dr Taylor says when he comes in. Paediatric haematologist Dr Taylor arrives to see Edie. Good morning. <laughs> How you doing? Found out what it is. Uh -huh. It's flu -y. Right, is it? Yeah. Okay. I would prefer to not give her her and um, okay. uh, Dex this, this month. It happens. <gasps> it's just when you get, like, you just want to, we're yeah. so close to the end. And I know, like, I know. Follow the same pattern. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. It's disappointing news. Edie won't have chemo today, and instead will go home with medicine to treat her flu symptoms. It has given mum a bit of anxiety, but no, um, we'll just miss out this month, and she'll get again next month when she's recovered from this um, bugs that she's got. Edie's Hickman line needs to be cleaned before she can go home. It's a plastic tube which delivers chemotherapy to her veins. Squeaky clean. Squeaky, squeaky clean. I knew Edie when she was diagnosed. Almost, Almost two, two years. years. To the day. To the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? Look at my tray. What have I forgotten? Um, the sponge. The sponge. Oh. Silly dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's one of the best. They all are. <laughs> Daddy is. Everybody's Daddy the best. The I know. Right, I'll go and see her. Thank you okay, so much. Bye-bye. Um, actually, we got a note for blood swab today. One of Dot's newest patients is five-year-old Carter. Twelve weeks ago, he was diagnosed with a rare disorder that affects one in 200,000 children. I think you're more likely to get struck by lightning to, than to have this condition. He's got Lanarhan's cell histiocytosis, which um, comes under the cancer umbrella, but it's an immune disorder, so it gets treated like a cancer. Dot prepares chemotherapy for Carter with Nurse Louise and student nurse Megan. Chlorine chloride, 2020. I used to be six foot two when I started my training. Yeah. 30 years ago. So that's what happens. So be careful. <laughs> Carter's chemo is delivered through a portacath, a small disc that sits under his skin. Dot must carefully insert a needle into the portacath. Right, ready? Which will deliver the chemo to Carter's veins. <laughs> Good nice. Job. Nice. nice. Good job. <laughs> right, ready? One, two, three. A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Just going to do a wee flash. Yay! Carter will have chemo every three weeks for the next two years. I mean, some of our kids are in treatment for three years, um, so we get to know them pretty well. Do you like Dot? Yeah, you love Dot, don't you? You always talk about Dot. You've got a photo of Dot in your living room, haven't you? Yeah, about blue oh. slime. Yeah, when you was making blue slime. Mm-hmm. So, no, Dot, Dot is one of his faves. <laughs> After half an hour, Carter's treatment is finished. I'm at level, yeah, we look at your line. I see the bit of blood. OK, good job. good job. Well done, that was amazing. Admire the families, admire the parents, because it's, it's a hard thing to go through. If I put myself in their place, I don't know if I'd cope. But as parents say, well, you've just got to cope. you just got to go on with it. You've got to be there for them. On the medical ward, a party is gathering to celebrate the end of three-year-old Lachlan's treatment for neuroblastoma. He's spent a good four months here um, for his treatment, so he would come in for 10 days um, every five weeks. Lachlan's family have come from all over Scotland to see him take part in a special ritual. Just to say congratulations on finishing all your medicines and you're going to ring the bell. <laughs> Mommy, help me. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. I love these days. I get very emotional these days sometimes. It does bring a little kind of lump to your throat when you see all that. It is. It's, it's a very rewarding job.
exciting, but very rewarding. Eleven days after surgery to put his bowel back inside his body, baby Jackson has been given the all clear to go home. I think I'm more excited because we're leaving, but I think once we get home, I'll because I've now got the midwives to call on if he's sick or oh, we'll be fine. Between the two of us, we'll manage to raise him. <laughs> we'll be fine. Yeah. Jackson has been cared for at the neonatal unit for 14 days, and Chris is keen to show his appreciation. Ah, well, my football team decided to raise some money for charity. Uh, they didn't come far, but I suggested we do it for the neonatal, just because we've been in here and see the effort they put in, nothing. So it's a bit with to do a music video, like, so we're not ne too happy about that, but. <laughs> Can't be too big. <laughs> you think? <laughs> what we can do with that, like? <laughs> just to put them in it. It's huge. It's <laughs> feet <laughs> when I go in here. A bit hard. Lift up his head. <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> so little. Well, how are we getting... I don't know. <laughs> We're struggling at the first hurdle here. <laughs> hey, when I get to take him home. <laughs> With Jackson finally dressed, it's time to go home. Is that us? That's you Three to go. <laughs> well, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time to go. Thank you. <laughs>